kind introduction from all the introductions I got recently. This was the most recent one. I'm super excited to be here today. Um, this is my first presentation on site I'm giving for many, many years now, two years. So this is really exciting for me and exactly that's the topic I want to tackle today. And I know it's a, like a different, difficult time right after the lunch break. So I really appreciate every single one being here today. And I'm, thank you so much for the live audience also from the web. So the pandemic was indeed a very challenging topic for all of us. And when we think back, we certainly think of dark times. We certainly think of the like, lockdowns which had a really strong negative impact on many of us. We were socially isolated. We were not able to meet our friends. We were not able to go outside to have a drink with friends in a bar. But was everything really only black? Did we also have things to learn? This is what I want to tackle about. But honestly, I think many of us in the middle of the lockdowns, when everything started, and everything changed all of a sudden. We were just thinking, I'm so much looking forward when things are as they used to be again, when things are gonna be normal again, even though like normal, what is normal? And what we've learned in the past during crisis, there are two sorts of people. And this has been always during, like this is not the first pandemic in the history. This is not the first crisis in history. It's something what we are in there right now, but we've le had learnings in the past. And one of the learnings is that there are two kinds of people how you can react on such an epidemic. On the one hand, those who just say, I want everything to be back normal again, like it used to be. Everything should be like it was two years ago. And then we have the other side the innovators, the disruptors who say, oh wow, this was a really terrible time for me. My restaurant closed, but what could I take out of this? How can I take the situation, this new situation, this not normal, because there's no normal. In psychology, you don't have this wording normal at all. Uh, but how do I take the situation and make just the best out of it for me? So I strongly believe that this idea that we are going back to normal is, is not a good one. I personally don't want to go back to where we've been two years ago. I had some interesting findings. I, I made interesting new discoveries about myself, about the people around me, and about how I can develop and how can can work with others. So I'm just curious. So this is a little bit of conversation stage. So I would be also curious to get to know you a little bit. So if you think of the pandemic, did, did this change something for you? So for instance, who of you spent more time outdoors? So maybe you can raise the hands. Yeah, that, that's a couple of you. What about who started to cook more? Yeah, that's also some. Who started to use, for instance, a fitness app that did not use before? That's a lot. That's much more than, than for the previous ones. And something which interests me a lot, a little bit about my background. So yes, I'm a professor at university, but I'm a professor for game development. So you could imagine I love playing video games. I am a gamer and I come from a game development background. So I used to work for companies like Electronic Arts. So this is like my strong wish. And everything I think of, I have in wish and games. And I would be interested in you. Who of you spent more time playing games? And this is a lot. And this is a lot. And this is what we also saw um, in the statistics. I'm show you some of, of our findings also soon. But what was really interesting to see to the, to during the pandemic, this is, doesn't come that much of a surprise. But sp people spend so much more time playing video games. And I'm saying this for a specific reason, because video games, the way how we experience it, um, has to cope with so many stereotypes and with so many prejudices. Like I as a game developer, every day I have to 
tell the society basically what are video games. It's not all wireland. It doesn't. It's all about getting addicted to video games. But there are so many positive aspects to video games too. I also have to tell everyone the games industry is an industry. The games industry makes more money than the books industry, than the streaming industry, than Hollywood and the music industry combined. So this is a huge industry. And but like the general society did not see a games event when looking at a picture like this, but more like, hey, I don't know. I don't know what could this be. This is like a stadium filled of people watching others play League of Legends. So the games industry actually, um, the eSports events are now more popular than an NBA final, for instance, in America. So FIFA online is watched by more people than um, NBA, the real um, on-site games. So this is something which was ignored quite a lot before the pandemic. And here's the good news. So during the first lockdown, and this, this was a little bit the good news for me and the happy moments I had during the first lockdown, all of a sudden, this digital industry, the games industry, got the recognition it deserved. It was appreciated by the general society for several reasons. All of a sudden, I don't know if, if anyone watched this, but like Formula One all of a sudden used <laughs> the, the real Formula One drivers were competing against eSports drivers in a virtual car racing game because there were no real races. And all of a sudden, like all those games got a lot of recognition. Um, cycling games were virtual, like people were on their real bikes at home, but connected to a virtual com computer and in a cycling simulation, biking in a race. And I was, for instance, also invited to be a guest in an in a Austrian um, TV show about talking about sports, esports. And this was something where all of a sudden there was so much recognition in games. And then the next super good news for me as a game developer, the WHO for the first time actually not said, oh, video games make you addicted. They actually told people, please during the lockdowns play video games for two reasons. The first reason, what do you think? Sports, sports games. For the Wii, for instance, there are so many sports games where you can be physically active. Physical active during a lockdown all by yourself is not only important for your body, but also for your brain. Um, so they're recommended to play sports games, but also social games. Social online games like Animal Crossing. This was one of the games which was released pretty much in the first lockdown. I don't know who of you knows Animal Crossing and maybe played it a little bit. A few. Who played World of Warcraft? Okay. <laughs> also, same story. Open online game where you can meet other people. And both of those games, also Minecraft, all of a sudden they were used during the lockdowns not for playing video games. Not only, of course, also for playing video games, but for virtual conferences, for weddings, for celebrations of birthdays, for online funerals. And you could see that people who had actually no interest in video games beforehand all of a sudden used those virtual worlds for a different purpose. Because the tools we had, like Zoom and Skype and you name them, did not come with the features those virtual game environments brought to the people. And that's why here we can see like a giant funeral um, in, in, I think this was World of Warcraft of a famous streamer back then, um, weddings in Animal Crossing, dates in Animal Crossing. And I'm gonna explain you why people without gaming aff um, affiliation actually moved um, to those platforms. So this is a com comparison between Zoom and on the right side, you can see actually there was a tech conference in Animal Crossing. So what is the difference in Skype or in Zoom or WebEx? Um, it's really lovely because I can, I can see my friends or my colleagues, but there is something with super obvious. Even though they see my face, I can see their face. It's so obviously that we are separated 
We are physically apart from each other. I am in my office, they are in their office. We are together, but not in the same room. So we can talk, but we are not sharing the room, the physical space, or the time with each other. This does something to our head. And that's why virtual worlds, I call them now virtual worlds um, for a reason, um, come with a benefit. Because all of a sudden I can spend physical time with other people. So I can, in Animal Crossing, we could go to a, a museum together, we can go to the aquarium together. It feels like we're spending this time together and um, actually having an activity, a shared activity, or playing a small game together. This was also the reason why the um, WHO called this um, play apart but together and really recommended to use social games um, in order to keep your mental health alive. So there have, have been studies by Oxford which then also showed that playing such online games really can help you to keep your mental health um, because you want to meet and your friends and spend time to the, um, with them going beyond just talking. Um, we did some studies for the data analysis geeks um, among you. So we are doing a lot of um, data analysis, analytics on, on games. Games like are a really big treasure on, on big data because we can work with the data sets of millions of people. And here we looked at, for instance, at the social bonds of players of League of Legends. Who plays or knows League of Legends in this audience? Oh, that's, that's a few. So this is also like one of the really famous open on, um, online games where like a lot of people are playing with each other or against each other. And the idea was we wanted to find out, looking at the data sets, whether or not those social connections are actually, which are formed, are gonna stay. Because it's easy to say, hey, during a lockdown, people are playing to, um, with each other because they sort of can or have to, but afterwards they're just yeah, living their lives, continue living their lives. And, but we found in our study that people who started playing um, League of Legends during this time together actually became closer friends over time and also tended to continue those friendships after the lockdown. So it has a very strong social impact on the people. Um, so to summarize, I, I, I gave you a little bit an overview and a peek already into my passion, which are games. But what I really want to focus on today is that such crisis can be a really good accelerator for digitalization or for things, <laughs> you, you name them, and can really speed up things. In my case, it really speed up the idea what games can do for us, and I will also later in this talk gives a few examples because I strongly believe that the games industry, also how we can, how we just saw here, is a little bit of a vision of how the future looks like. So it gives us a good outlook what technologies are interesting because nobody of you would actually have this fancy little mobile phone with this fancy GPU um, if it's not for us players who are pushing constantly the borders of we want to have a better performance, we want to have better graphics and that's why you have such good uh, GPU um, in your mobile phones these days. Um, so, um, um, pandemic, any crisis can really push forward um, the idea of where we are going and what should we develop next. And also this crisis had such a strong impact on so many different companies, including healthcare, finance, and so on and so forth, and pushed forward the products. Because of course, during the first lockdowns, it was so visible. If you had a restaurant, for instance, and you had to close down, either you find an alternative or you're closing for good. Um, just as a little bit of a backstory, um, if you think of um, the, um, the, the previous pandemics we had, um, just a, one example of what impact this had on our society, what we can see now also is that people are now moving, like we had this idea all of us want to live in the city. Now, during the pandemic, people really found that they want to move back to the countryside. And this is the same thing we observed also during the past epidemics. So you could have predicted basically that the housing prices will explode in the next coming years. So they, 
it's more very likely that it will be, be um, become more expensive to live on the countryside in the coming years. And this is something which we can observe from the past. Just to give you a little bit example here. So, whoa, okay, this was interesting. Forgive me. So, so something, something interesting just happened. Okay. Good. Um, so I, I want to give you a little few inspirations because again, this is a developers conference and the idea is also to maybe inspire you to have your own innovations. I strongly believe that we can use this pandemic as a boost, um, not only for others, but also to bring our expertise as developers to different fields. So just a few examples. So those are examples by the um, business agency um, CB Insights, who gave this nicely, nice report about 10 things which they find could be inspiring for the future and which the in pandemic will have a great impact on. And we can see this already. So healthcare. So I asked in the beginning who of you started using virtual fitness apps. So virtual fitness sec sector, this was a sector which almost did not exist before the pandemic. Also using virtual reality or games or wearables um, more um, constantly in order to track your fitness achievements. Telehealth. In Austria, I don't know how, we, how it's in Croatia, but in Austria, we were not able to pick up a recipe for medication um, in a pharmacy just by calling our doctor. But now, since the pandemic, we can just call the doctor and he will book it directly um, to our card and we can go to the pharmacy to get our medication. So a lot of time and energy and resources are saved thanks to that. Finance, of course remote working infrastructure. So everything which is around um, remote working is changed like crazy um, because all the tele telecommunication and collaboration tools have changed a lot. And also, for instance, the use of virtual reality um, for various industry applications um, is becoming incredibly interesting. E-learning. All schools have been closed. And this was for digitalization sense a good idea, a good thing, um, because many teachers and many educators who were sort of resilient um, towards new technologies were all of a sudden pushed into using e-learning technologies, which are really designed to make the lives of educators and learners easier. But especially many of maybe older um, educators were not really into learning maybe a new technology or thought, okay, the classical system works as it is, which can be always improved, for instance, by applying Google Doc solutions or some e-learning systems or just sharing documents online instead of handing the papers all the time. Um, so e-learning, virtual laboratories and so on and so forth, retail and also um, all the food services. Again, the example we just had before, as a restaurant, you had those two choices, either close and eventually close for good, or go with some innovative solutions, try to um, offer online delivery service or open kitchen or virtual kitchens. And we can really say, see um, in, in graphics like this one, that this is not a trend which was just during the pandemic. Those are trends which are about to stay. So all services um, and, and products around those technologies has a very high impact on how we're going to live, not now, but also in the future. And of course, again, what, what we talked in the beginning, the entire entertainment and event management um, sector. So a lot of conferences had to shut down, but the conferences also like this one who found solutions to provide digital solutions or hybrid solutions like we have nowadays were able to thrive. And so many technologies were developed during this time supporting that. And one, again, one of the key technologies I really want to focus on are those social experiences like we have in games. And that's a little bit the irony because we had things like um, virtual worlds already 20, 30 years ago. Who still remembers Second Life? A few of you. So this, is, this was this virtual space where all the big companies were investing a lot of money, but then in, in the end it was just naked avatars and porn, I think. 
um, and this escalated quite quickly. Um, but actually, this would have been a solution which would be super nice right now, and all the sudden solutions which are being developed now are very similar to that, um, just using a few new technologies. Um, also, Europe gave a, um, um, a very interesting article and summary that, for instance, that they expect the spending in AI technologies to rise by 33% um, percent between 2020 and 23. So all those technologies and everything about data analysis and AI, Internet of Things, providing services, software as a service, are really um, pieces for developers which are likely to engage in the different sectors we saw. Um, I want to give you also some personal insights. So what changed um, for me and for my team? So I lead a research lab with 13 um, people. And of course, for us, it was also very difficult. And I'm teaching also um, full time. So it was a very difficult time for me because usually I'm used to classes like this one, more or less similar. I, I teach like 150 students game development, would go to an open lecture hall and then have a similar picture like this. What did I do? I moved my lectures to Twitch. Who is familiar with Twitch in this audience? So Twitch is actually a platform for gaming. Or two years ago, it was a platform for gaming. So you would go to this platform and watch play others play video games. And I thought, OK, this platform, I always loved the idea of, of teaching in a university that people can come to, to, to this lecture hall without being a student of mine. It's an open university. And you can just go there and, and, and listen to the lectures. And this would have been not possible with the traditional tools um, like WebEx or Zoom, where you have this closed system. So I thought, OK, I'm going to try it. And during the first lockdowns, I used Twitch as a platform of choice to have my lectures, a platform back then mainly used for watching other play video games. It was a little bit risky. It was also a um, little weird sometimes. Um, but what I found, so my first lecture usually takes about 30 minutes. It's a, like an introduction lecture where I meet the students. I have 150 students. And all of a sudden, this lecture, because I tried to have it interactive, I tried to engage um, with them took more than an hour because it was so interactive, because the students were talking so much with each other and with, with me in this chat, because the Twitch format, for those who don't know, um, so basically I'm streaming, I'm live streaming what I'm doing, what I'm saying, and on the right side you have this chat window where people can actually um, interact with me or others. And all of a sudden, um, it was 300 or 400 people who were there Many, many of them not my students, many of them professional game developers all of a sudden, and engaging conversations with my content. And all of a sudden, I had an entirely different lecture format. It was not me telling people what they might want to hear, want to hear or what they're here for, but I, I was starting conversations. And while I was giving content, people were talking to each other all the time, which would, in a setting like this, this wouldn't be possible at all because it would get too loud, too noisy. But all of a sudden, they were having conversations about my content, sharing links, sharing additional information. And this was, for me, this was a key. Twitch, by the way, just as a side note, I'm, and I just want to also inspire you, take technologies which are already existing, again, and game technologies, game engines, tools like Twitch, Discord, um, tools around game development are always in a very, very sophisticated um, development um, style because the gamers do have quite um, high um, expectations also towards frame rate and so on and so forth. And there's a saying, for instance, that Elon Musk once say, uh, said he would hire for his rocket companies. He would really ha um, love to hire programmers from game development um, because rocket science is not rocket science, but game development is. Because if you develop for a website, the frame rate Hmm. But if you develop for a console and you have a frame rate be between 60 frames per second, it's really about performance. So during the pandemic, like all those technologies had a really strong rise. So Twitch is used and still used 
quite, um, quite much more. We also made a little study around that to see what it is used for. And we could see a strong rise in entertainment and music, for instance. So people were all of a sudden having their concerts in there because no real concert was possible anymore. So they were ha having those virtual concerts on Twitch. Cook shows. Um, and something which is also interesting, uh, also more and more professors um, use the science and technology to actually do live coding or share um, their ideas like I did. But more and more retro games were played. Why is that? Because during the first lockdowns and during a crisis, we tend to want to go back to things we are more used to. So people are really likely to want to see something they already know. And that's why more and more retro games were played and also streamed. And just as a side note, um, what also changed for me, so I'm a VR developer. So the projects I mostly use, so I strongly believe in VR and the, the project I'm most known for is a virtual reality physics experience um, project, which was also for, um, featured in a Forbes magazine back then. And we were just before the pandemic, three days before the first lockdown, we were in schools pushing forward that we are finally gets into schools. And with the first lockdown, all my research was for nothing because no, no young boy or girl had a VR device at their home. So I really, we had to think of something new and have to disrupt what we do. And instead of pushing VR forward, we used open technologies, web-based technologies. And the good thing here, since we used a game engine, for us it was something which came pretty much from scratch because um, thanks to the game engine, we can deploy to VR and also to web. So just as a closing point, I strongly believe that the technology is very, very using and exposed to really help us to innovate, but also how we can work. The same technologies I just showed you can not only help you to find new um, interesting projects, but eventually also rethink the way how you're developing. Maybe live stream your development projects sometimes on Twitch to find exposure or people interested in your projects. Maybe have your um, Christmas parties in events like, in, like Gather Town, where you have this game-like environment, but you can still spend time with your colleagues in a virtual environment. Use Discord for, um, for, for your project organizations or for your, um, for, your, for your group organizations. Or, like this company does, um, instead of using Zoom and so on and so forth, they use Gather Town, which is again this game-like virtual world environment, um, but really designed for communication and collaboration. And they remade the entire office. And now they're working since the pandemic almost entirely remotely. But everyone logs in in Gather Town in the beginning, goes to their PC, is there waiting for the others to join, asking them questions and so on. It really feels like a real um, office environment for them, thanks to, to gather down this virtual world environment. And just to close now, um, this is not our only crisis. The pandemic was probably a small crisis we just had now. We are in the middle of a very big crisis, which is related to climate change. There is more crisis for us to come, more problems we have to solve. And I really just want to engage you and think a little bit how to not solve the current problems we have, but also the problems you might see in five years or 10 years coming. And if you develop, develop not for now, but maybe also for the future. So thank you so much. And yeah, have a lovely rest of the conference.